Well, welcome back to our channel, everyone. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to row a boat down a moving river. Now, rowing is by far the safest and most effective way to navigate down any swift waters. So I'm gonna be performing this how-to video using my Stealthcraft Skiff Drift Boat. But these techniques and methods can be used on any boat that you'll be rowing down a river. And we're gonna take you step-by-step step through the process. So let's get started. So first off, you wanna make sure that your boat is safe to navigate. So what I mean by that is you wanna make sure all lines, anchor lines or ropes are inside of the boat and your anchor is fully pulled up. And you also wanna make sure that if you have a motor on your boat, that your motor is propped up a little bit so it's out of the water because that motor will affect the steering of your boat. Now the next step is, is to know which direction your boat is supposed to be facing as you row down the river. Now a drift boat is designed to be rowed, so that being said, the bow is meant to be facing in front of you, facing downstream as you row, and the stern is meant to be facing behind you. But say you were rowing a power boat such as a jet boat, a square back canoe, a rowboat, you would always want the back end of the boat where the motor is meant to be placed in front of you because that's the most stable area of the boat and that's going to give you the most control as you progress down the river. So now we're going to talk about posture. Having the right posture is very important because it's going to allow you to maximize the use of your energy as you're rowing and it's also going to allow you to really focus on the basic mechanics of rowing when you're first getting started. You wanna make sure your body is positioned in the right way. So you wanna make sure that your legs are making a 90 degree angle and your body from your top of your legs to your upper portion of your body is also making a 90 degree angle and you're sitting straight up as possible. This is gonna allow you to maximize the power when you backstroke. So now we're gonna get our oars positioned in the right way here. Now typically on drift boats, you'll have blocks here that your oar locks go into. So you can adjust those oar locks corresponding to your seat of how far you want your oar locks and your oars positioned out from your seat here. So you want them, so how I like to adjust mine here is when my oars are straight pointed at each other, just like this, is that they're just inside of my kneecaps, about halfway in between my stomach and the tip of my knee. And now when you adjust these rubber bumpers on your oars here, you want your oars about just inside a shoulder's length apart. So when I'm sitting in my chair, I got my hands on the grips here. I like them just inside a shoulder's length apart. About, I don't know, six to eight inches seems to be a good range from or tip to or tip here. Now everybody's gonna be just a little different, but taking the time to make sure your boat is set up perfectly for your comfort zone is gonna really help you and make learning oaring a much easier process. So as we begin to navigate down the river here, one thing that I wanted to mention is that you never want to front oar as you proceed down the river. You never want to push forward. You always want to push backwards. You want to use the speed of the current to carry you down the river and you're just using your oars to take the edge off the current, slow you down just a little bit and to direct your boat and steer your boat through tight quarters. Now as you become more of an experienced rower, you'll be able to find some times when you can front oar to save you time and push through things faster. But as you're just beginning, I would recommend just taking your time and just back oaring, taking that edge off the current and going slow as you proceed through the river, especially when you're going through rapids or tight sections of the river with a lot of wood. So now we're gonna make sure we have the correct grip on our oar handles here. So as you oar, you wanna make sure your oar blades are going vertical into the water and you have a nice firm grip on your oars and as you stroke, your oar blades remain vertical in the water the entire time. You do not wanna roll your wrist because if you roll your wrist, that oar blade's gonna turn slightly and it's not gonna allow you to maximize the use of your power as you oar. It'll also really help your muscle memory learn the basic mechanics of your oaring if you make sure to keep those oar blades vertical in the water as you stroke. So guys, now I'm gonna talk about how to control the direction of your boat and how each stroke on the oar will affect which direction your boat will go. So I'm gonna back oar us here. We're just about to go over this little fall here. So as I back oar here, I'm gonna back oar just a little bit, okay? Now as I pull back and backstroke on just my left oar, I'm not gonna touch my right oar, I'm just gonna backstroke my left oar, you can see that moves the front of the boat to the left and the back of the boat to the right, okay? I'm gonna straighten this back out. Get it straightened back out here. Now I'm gonna backstroke on just my right oar here in a second, and it's gonna show you how the boat turns with just the right oar. So, Get us straight here. I'm gonna straighten us out. The boat's just gliding. Okay, I got us straight here. Now I'm just gonna hit back on my right oar. Okay, one, two. You can see it turns the back of the boat to the left and front of the boat to the right. Okay, now, so as I go through log jams, like I said, 
you always want the back of your bolt facing towards the inside edge of a bend or you're back away from danger. So as you can see here, we're going into this bend. There's this fast chute that goes over to a log and falls into this deep, big, swirly pool here. So I'm gonna make sure as I progress into this turn that I'm gonna slow the boat down and my back end is going to be facing away from danger toward the inside edge of this turn here. Making sure that your back end is facing towards this inside edge is gonna have you the, allow you to have the most control as you proceed through these situations. And you can see I'm just back oaring right now because this is slowing me down. This is allowing me to control the situation. I'm back oaring and if I needed to, I could even back oar and stop the boat. You can see I'm holding us right now. I have good form. My oars are nice and vertical in the water. I just have a nice backstroke going. I'm letting the current just slowly take me down. Okay, I got my back end of the boat behind me facing towards the inside edge of this current. And I'm just slowly going through structure here. You can see I'm going underneath these branches and I'm gonna be going underneath these trees. And I'm just allowing the boat to slowly go. I'm bringing my right oar inside just a little bit to avoid these trees. You can see my right oar, I extend my arm. And now I'm just gonna let the current take me right through this chute. And as soon as I get around this log here, I'm gonna back oar heavy, okay? So right now, I'm gonna start back oaring. I'm gonna start back oaring. I'm gonna start back oaring. And you can see that gave me the full control. It, I, kept my, I kept the back of my boat, the stern of my boat, facing the inside of this bend the whole time and I'm still back oaring. Now I'm just letting the current kind of take us here and that's as simple as that. You just want to make sure anytime you're going into dangerous situations, any kind of tight quarters, rapids, that you have control. You want to make sure to just proceed with caution, always back or so you can analyze the situation. Take your time and decide which route is the safest to navigate through. So you can see here, there's a little chute here. There's a big log under the water. I'm keeping my back end facing away from this tree that's overhanging. And I'm just back oaring. I'm letting the current take me. Okay. Back oaring slightly. Back oaring slightly. And now I just have a wide open space here. So I'm just going to let the current carry me down. I'm just going to go down nice and easy. My boat's in a nice position. You can see the back end of my boat is facing towards the inside edge of this next turn here. So now as I'm facing down, I'm going to still just do a couple back strokes, one or two strokes here, slow me down. You know, I'm not oaring too hard. I'm just letting the current take me. Just letting the current take me right down through. Okay. Now we're gonna come into another little tight situation here. You can see there's a tree, tree falling just ahead of me here. Now I'm just gonna make sure the back of my boat's facing the inside edge of this turn. I'm slowing us down just a bit. Just a little bit. You don't wanna go too much because you wanna make you wanna maintain the same direction of your boat. If you're going too hard, then that might spin your boat out of your direction. So you just going with the speed of the current, just adjusting to the situation. You can see I just glided nice and smooth through there. Now I'm gonna come into another wide open space here. I back or just a little, back or just a little bit. Now I got a nice straightaway. I'm gonna kind of turn my boat so it's parallel with the current as I come around this turn and the river straightens out. I'm trying to keep my boat as parallel with that current the entire time. And now I'm just letting the current take us. The boat's going nice and parallel with the current. I'm just letting it, letting us glide with the current. I'm not working too hard. I'm not overanalyzing the situation and trying to oar why I don't have to. Okay. Now there's times, you know, when front oaring may be necessary to get the right position. Like right now, if you wanted to get over more or spin more, you could turn a little bit and proceed through. So now I'm coming into a different corner here. I'm keeping my stern facing backwards. And there are times when you will want a front oar just to, just to adjust your position of the boat just a hair. Like right now I'm gonna back oar just a little bit. I'm gonna back oar again one more time. Now my boat's spinning through this bend. I got my stern pointed towards the end, stern end of the boat pointing towards the inside edge of the bend. Now I'm just gonna front oar one click on my right oar here. Okay, you can see that helps straighten me out. Now I'm gonna hit a back oar. I'm gonna back oar. I'm gonna back oar just a bit. 
mostly on my right oar. That's just gonna straighten my boat out here. So now I'm going back parallel with the current again. I'm gonna get my back into the boat towards the inside of this next turn here. This is a very windy stretch of river. So I'm gonna back oar just a couple cranks and I'm just letting the current carry me. So now I'm having the boat carry back in. I'm gonna twist my oars just so the boat straightens up just a hair. And here we go, back down through. Oaring is one of the safest and most effective ways to navigate your boat down any river. Now, if you're first getting started rowing, I would suggest going out with a guide or bringing a buddy out with you just until you're comfortable rowing the boat that you'll be using. I'd also just suggest picking a river that's wide with a moderate current speed where you can make plenty of mistakes and not put yourself in a dangerous situation. Now, we hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful for some of you. If you did, make sure to hit the like button down below. And also, if you're new to our channel, feel free to subscribe if you'd like like to see these techniques used in our adventure video.